The UN Security Council is holding an emergency meeting on Sunday to discuss Iran's attack, and the Secretary General has urged an end to the fighting in a statement. He said, I strongly condemn the serious escalation represented by the large-scale attack launched on Israel by Iran. I call for an immediate cessation of these hostilities. Neither the world nor the region can afford another war. Well, let's go to our correspondent, Gabriel Elizondo, who's live for us at the United Nations headquarters in New York. And the Security Council decided a few hours ago now, Gabe, to hold that meeting on Sunday after Israel requested it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, the Israeli ambassador to the UN sent a letter to the Secretary General and also to the President of the Security Council, which is the uh, ambassador from Malta. Malta holds the presidency of the Council for the month of April. Uh, seeing no uh, objection, uh, Malta scheduled this meeting. It will be held at 4 p.m. on Sunday, New York time. That's about 20 GMT. We expect that the council will be briefed by Rosemary DiCarlo, the Under Secretary General for Political and Peacebuilding Affairs. We expect that Ms. DiCarlo will brief the council about the latest developments in the uh, is Iran's uh, retaliatory strike. Uh, or strikes, I should say, on Israel. We also are hearing that both Israel and Iran will participate in the meeting. Now, uh, Israel wants the council to condemn uh, Iran and maybe take some action. It's unclear if the council, though, will issue any sort of statement or uh, will reach any sort of conclusion or, or, or action, I should say. The council is under no obligation to do so. Uh, but nevertheless, this meeting will allow all council members to really publicly state their country's position when it comes to this uh, uh, Iran's uh, uh, retaliatory strike on Israel at this very, very sensitive moment in the Middle East right now. Yeah. So we'll be watching that meeting on Sunday afternoon, New York time, very closely. Absolutely, Gabe. And we have to remember that the UN Security Council did not condemn Israel's uh, attack, deadly attack, of the Iranian embassy in the Syrian capital two weeks ago. Iran maintaining it had the right to respond to that attack. What has its mission to the UN been saying tonight? Yeah, that's absolutely right. Iran sent out a, a letter to the Secretary General, actually, and also to the Security Council, basically saying this is our legitimate response to April 1st, when Israel uh, struck the Iranian diplomatic mission in Damascus. In a statement, Iran's uh, ambassador said, we are under our rights to self-defense under Article 51 of the UN Charter. That article says that all UN member states have the right to respond should they be a victim of armed attack of another state. And Iran is saying that is exactly what we're doing, and we reserve our right to do that. So Iran laying out their case from a very diplomatic uh, standpoint under the auspices of the UN Charter. Gabe, thank you very much. Our correspondent, Gabriel Elizondo, at the UN headquarters in New York. We're joined now by our diplomatic editor, James Bates. And James, you know, with Israel promising a response, just how dangerous a situation are we in? Are some people right to be asking if we are on the precipice of a much wider war? There is a danger of an all-out war. There is a danger of miscalculation. That makes this a very dangerous moment. But let me just recap where we are. April the 1st, that attack on the uh, Iranian consulate in Damascus, uh, Iran says that that attack was an attack on its soil. It quotes the Vienna Convention from 1961, which says that you shouldn't attack any diplomatic premises or embassies or consulates. Israel says that that was a legitimate attack. They say they point to the people they killed, which were top Iranian military officials, including three top generals, seven killed in that attack. It took, and I think this is interesting, it took Iran 13 days before it responded. Uh, Iran responded. It says that that's totally legitimate under the UN Charter. Ar Article 51 of the UN, UN Charter says nothing in the present Charter shall impair the inherent right of individual or collective self defence if an armed attack occurs against a member state of the United Nations. Um, so we've had one complete cycle of this. We've had an attack and we've had 
a counterattack. I think the danger now is if it goes beyond this cycle, if Israel responds again. And I think you're hearing that Iran uh, has drawn a line under this for now. The US seems to have had some contact with Iran before this took place. Some of this may well have been choreographed to a degree. The question now, I think, is what the Israelis do. Mm -hmm. And remember that Prime Minister Netanyahu's whole career, his primary enemy has been Iran. So this is a very big test for him. Can the Biden administration restrain Israel? Um, if Israel decides to respond, can they make sure it's just a, a, a response for show rather than something that causes more deaths? Absolutely. Because it is worth noting there were no people killed yes. in this latest attack. Unlike the Israeli attack on the Iranian embassy, a number of people killed, including diplomatic staff. Mm. As you said, Iran took 13 days to calibrate, to decide on how to how to respond. What does that tell us about how, you know, how me measured or how calibrated Iran was? And also, when you talk about how Israel is going to respond and how much of it comes down to the pressure that the Biden administration can put on Israel, well, they haven't been able to get Israel to do what they say they want Israel to do for six months now. The fact it took 13 days, I think, shows the dilemma that was facing the Islamic Republic and what to do that wouldn't lead to an all-out war but would show for domestic consumption and show the region that they're strong and they are not going to take uh, attacks on what they say is their soil and they believe that consulate is their soil. It's worth adding in here, though. Remember um, April the 1st when this took place? It was the same day as that world central kitchen attack. Those aid workers were killed in Gaza. I think the Iranians also saw the condemnation of of Israel there and probably didn't want to get in the way of that which played in in, in favor uh, of their narrative and also I think the Iranians would have been aware of the ongoing talks about a ceasefire uh, and possible release of prisoners and captives so that may have played in into into the delay uh, with regard to the uh, Biden administration um, ultimately they have lots of tools because they are um, the supplier of funds and weapons mm -hmm. to Israel. Uh, Biden hasn't acted till now, but, or in a strong way, but remember what's at stake here, because if we do have an all-out war between Iran and Israel, that will cause chaos in this region, and it will cause chaos beyond this region. The economic re repercussions mm -hmm. of a war uh, involving this region and all the oil and the oil yeah. price, that potentially means Joe Biden won't be re-elected in November. So he's going to put a lot of pressure on. And that's exactly what I was going to come to you. Given the wider economic uh, consequences of a possible much wider conflict in the region, could we see the Biden administration putting the kind of pressure on Israel that we haven't seen over the protection of civilians in Gaza? Uh, I think already uh, you're seeing them using positive words with Israel, telling them what a remarkable capacity to defend against and defeat um, unprecedented attacks. That's part of the White House statement that came out. They're trying to praise Israel, but behind the scenes, the bit you're seeing, not seeing below the waterline, I'm sure there's a great deal of pressure. I'm sure there's been a great deal of pressure since the 1st of April, to be honest. Um, I'm sure the Biden administration, although it's not condemned Israel publicly, was not at all happy about that attack uh, on the consulate in Damascus because they knew, and I think anyone who watched it knew, that Iran really had no alternative but to come up with some sort of response. James, thank you as always for your analysis. That's our diplomatic editor, James Bays. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.